Welcome to another Yorkshire Fossils fossil hunting episode. You have just me on the beach today. Over the weekend, we've had a massive storm which should have washed out plenty of fossils. Oh, wow. I'm going to make my way down now and hopefully, fingers crossed, There'll be plenty to find. Right, I'm on the bottom now. Let's get onto the beach and get hunting. As always, you find lots of nodules. You can see this one here has a partial ammonite inside. There's a few smaller examples protruding the edge there. Compared to when I last saw this fall, lots of the mud has actually washed away. You can see that some of the vegetation from higher up the cliff has slumped down. Just searching where the tide line has reached, just here just spotted an ammonite fossil actually just in the shingle it's not one we'd be able to split with the hammer and chisel because it's too thin so i'll keep hold of this one just spotted another fossil but i'm going to give you a chance to find it at home what i've spotted is an ammonite fossil it's not in a very large nodule but the fossil itself is completely fossilized in iron pyrite i'll make the area a little bit smaller it's actually just here You can see there the outer edge of the ammonite. It's been completely crushed on one side. It's quite heavy because of the iron pyrite, also known as fool's gold. And this is one which is nice to find, but not one that would keep. So I'm going to leave this one just on a rock. There's another really small ammonite nodule here. At one point it might have been larger, but now it's worn down just to this small little center. But there is an ammonite in there, so we can reveal that one in a little while. I actually just walked past this one, but there is another ammonite fossil just here. Same again, very eroded on the outer edges, but there is a full fossil in there. So that's another one which we can try and reveal. It's always nice finding those really small beach-worn pebbles that contain fossils. But of course, what we're mainly looking for is the much larger fossils, which are much more well-preserved and haven't been eroded. So let's keep looking. You can see there's an ammonite just starting to wear out here. It's definitely one that we should investigate further. Got a natural fracture running through as well. So hopefully that opens nice and easy. And another ammonite, but this one looks far too incomplete. So we can leave that one. There's another large grey rock just here. It's the right type of rock to contain something. Some calcite veins there. Can actually start to see an ammonite. If you look closely, there are some chambers of an ammonite just starting to expose. It's a nice chunk of pie right just here. If you have a little closer look at it. Doesn't really look like much on first glance, but if you look at the cross section, this is actually Gyrosteus fishbone. So you can see here some really thin plates of a prehistoric fish. Gyrosteus were thought to have looked something like a sturgeon about 180 million years ago. Unfortunately, this type of bone doesn't usually prep very well, so we can leave that one. On the workbench now, we are preparing a section of gyrosteus cartilage. This is from a huge fish, like a sturgeon, which lived during the Jurassic about 180 million years ago. There have actually never been any complete specimens found of a gyrosteus to this date. Any specimens we find from this creature are usually pretty unusual. There wasn't too much work for this particular piece, so now that we've removed all of that limestone, here is the finished part of a gyrosteus. We're not entirely sure which part of the creature it is from at the moment. However, in the future, we will hopefully prepare some much larger examples of this marine creature. This particular example is really sturdy and well-defined and we are really pleased with how it turned out. We've got many more projects on the go at the moment, so we'll begin work on the next one. It's a really small ammonite nodule just down here. Looks like a little macaron.
in that short space of time. These are the fossils that I managed to pick up. So you can see we've got a nice variation of nodules. Some are more eroded than others. But all of them have the potential to contain something rather nice. I'm going to take some home as they are, but some of the other ones I'm going to explore on camera. So let's get cracking. Hopefully we can get some nice specimens out of the rocks that we've found. I was actually quite intrigued by this stone. There we are. Let's have a little look inside. Oh wow, look at all those shells. You never know when you split these open if they're going to come out nice or not. But I think on this occasion, they've come out really well. You can see it's filled with shells on both sides. So beautiful. Just look at all those shells glistening in the light. So I've got this rock here, and I'm not entirely sure whether there's a fossil inside it or not. But there's only one way to find out. There's actually a crack formed already, which is a good sign. But is the fossil inside going to be well preserved? Let's have a look. And it is. Look at that. It's a Dactyloceros ammonite. It's actually exposed some of the calcite chambers as it's split open, which is pretty cool. You can see there, towards the centre, the ammonite is perfect. It's always a lovely surprise when you split open a nodule like this. We had no idea that there was going to be anything inside. And then when you see something like this, it makes it all worth it. So this is the nodule from earlier, which has already been partially exposed. But we're just going to try and reveal a little bit more to make sure it's worth actually taking home. Okay, and upon closer inspection, when splitting this nodule, you can see that the fossil inside, it actually has natural oils in there, which has been a really calcified ammonite, which has distorted the fossil. So on this occasion, this particular nodule isn't worth taking. Let's try this next one. There we are, we've got a split. And inside, we've got a nice ammonite fossil. You can see here, the ammonite has lots of calcite in it. That's what gives it this lovely orange coloration. Got a nice fine ribbing on the outer whorls. And then towards the center, you have this perfect Dactyloceros ammonite. And the beauty of splitting nodules like this is they go perfectly back together. Right, we're going to split open a couple more now. And then I think I'll take the other ones that we've found home. And the ammonite inside is actually really nice. It looks completely crushed on one side, but upon opening it, you can see that the ammonite itself is beautiful. It's got some lovely pyrotization as well, which gives it this lovely golden coloration. That's definitely another one which we'll be able to take home and clean up even further, but even in the state that it's in now, it's still really nice. This unusual piece of limestone contains not one, but two Dactyloceros ammonites. They look partially distorted, however the fact there are two preserved alongside each other makes this quite an uncommon find. The limestone is relatively soft and we can quickly reveal both of the ammonites. The whole process to prepare this specimen only takes a couple of hours and we are about ready to see the finished result already. After those finishing touches are applied, here's the final finished piece. Two ammonites as well as a fossilised shell preserved in between them. Although the specimens are not fully preserved and are partially distorted and crushed, it really does make for a really unique find and something which was absolutely worth bringing home and preparing. We are very happy with how this turned out. We've only got about 30 minutes left of daylight now, so I'm going to have another little search, see what else I can find, and then I'll head back up before it gets dark. I've got my headlamp with me, and I should be able to make my way up pretty easily. Managed to pick up these three nodules, which I'm going to investigate further. There we go, we've got a split, and inside, <laughs> got a perfect ammonite. This is all we could see to start with, just this small outer edge here. But after we've revealed the inside, 
you can see that it's a perfect Dactyloceros ammonite fossil. It's the tree completely revealed. It's not much work that needs doing to this one at all. It's definitely one for the bag. It's amazing. Look at that. And now for the last nodule. I think I've revealed all of what is left. So as you can see, there was some of the ammonite still in there. There's a vein of calcite passing through it. And lots of calcification in the ammonite chambers itself. Pretty cool fossil. It's nice to see how they all preserve differently. But on this occasion, this isn't one that we'll take home. So we'll leave this one. As always, after we've split these nodules, let's make a little hole, put the broken shards in, and then bury them back up with the sand. And then as the next tide comes in, these rocks will be completely washed away, dragged out to sea, and they'll erode down just into these smaller beach pebbles like what you see here. If you enjoyed today's hunt with just myself and you want to see more, let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.